Like All right, it is now my pleasure to introduce our first company of this round. Please welcome, is it you, presenting our Benjamin Levy, Yair Ohayan, and Michael Niesensen. Good enough. Is it you? Is it really you? Or is it somebody pretending to be you? That is a question that's costing businesses plenty because let's face it, as fast as the digital economy is growing, theft and fraud within it are growing even faster. And by faster, I mean that you might lose 100 bucks here and there, but there's an awful lot of you, and it adds up fast. And by fast, I mean $30 billion are expected to be lost in mobile-related fraud alone in 2015. And if you're looking for a reason why that number is so high, you're going to come face to face with two, passwords and smartphones. Passwords must die. Every quarter we get another breach. Uh, last, last month, uh, a billion and a half go missing. This week, 100 celebrities get their private pictures stolen from the iCloud. And if passwords are bad, smartphones are an open invitation to identity theft. They are largely unsecured. They hold all of our credentials to the cloud. If they get stolen or the credentials get breached, your identity does no longer belong to you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Benjamin Levy. I am the co-founder and CEO of VisitU. And let me tell you what VisitU's face recognition technology can do to fix this mess. And let's start with the simple fact that we authenticate people, not things. Essentially, we want to make your face your password, and all you need to do is take a selfie. And can we have the phone, please? Sorry about that. So let's say that you go to your favorite payment service. You press a button. The thing looks at you for a second, and you are authenticated. That simple. Oh, you missed it, right, because you were tweeting. Let me show that again. 700 milliseconds later, I am authenticated. Can we go back to the presentation? Thanks. So how do we do this? Well, we take the topology of your face. We make a mathematical template out of that. We can compare it to a previously stored template. If you match, you're in. Keep in mind, we do not store photographs. We store math. Then on top of that, we put a very clever layer of anti-spoofing technology to keep the bad guys out. Let me give you an example. The way light diffracts from a two-dimensional screen is different from the way it bounces off your three-dimensional face. We can tell. And then we face another challenge, which is making face recognition, not a new thing, work in the new and very chaotic environment of mobile, where you have no control over pose, over attitude, over lighting, over shading on the face. Okay, so, <sighs> sorry, <laughs> sorry about that. So, you have to wonder what would happen if somebody were to steal my phone and download my picture onto a tablet and try to spoof the system thus. So, uh, my crooked friend here is going to give it a try and spoiler alert, not going to work. Okay, so you failed, huh? So not only is he crooked, he's very resourceful. He has a 3D printer of my face. Okay? Uh, give it a try, and he shoots, and... And... And he misses, because we can tell. Uh, presentation, please. Thank you. Now that you know that this is reliable and secure, why don't we extend its power to the web? So you can use it everywhere. Can we go to the web, please? So you would go to your favorite uh, bank and uh, input your name. And instead of a password, you press Enter. You are requested to authenticate yourself on the phone. You've seen me do this before. I press it 700 milliseconds later. And on the web, please. Web, web. There you go, in like Flynn. Uh, and now the presentation. 
and the presentation. There you go. We are aimed at businesses because they are the ones that are feeling the brunt of all these uh, thievery. If you are a payment service, a mobile wallet provider, a bank, a credit union, you need this. If you are part of the sharing economy, you really need this. If you are an enterprise allowing for uh, remote access or bring your own device, you really, really need this. We are launching, oh, let me step back for a second. Our technology is very easy to integrate with your service. Uh, take our tech, stick it into your app, your service, let it roll, pay for what you use. We are launching in private beta in Q4. And if you would like to keep your business secure, we would love to help. We are Is It You. You can find us at isitu.biz. Thank you very much for your time. All right. <laughs> Judges, feel free to jump in. Come on, guys. Can it sense the stress at all? So like if I'm under duress and I'm, you know, someone has kidnapped me, for example. If, could if, it if somebody puts a gun to your head and forces you to look at your yeah. smartphone, they're, you're, they're getting in. They're, you're what? Uh, they're they're going to be able to get in. Okay. Uh, there's things we can do in that sense, but at this point, out of the $30 billion in trouble, uh, the gun to the head scenario. It's rare. It, it's a, yeah, it's very, very rare. rare. Hi. Uh, two quick questions. Sure. How is this better than using your fingerprint or your thumbprint? Obviously, yeah. there's been a lot of people are using that now on iOS yeah. devices and everything else. And then second, how dependent are you on camera quality on the phones? Okay, uh, second question first, not at all. Any uh, front-facing camera today, uh, we're good to go? We're good. Uh, first question, well, there's two phones with uh, fingerprints, uh, and the rest of the phones are not there. Uh, there's an estimated 6 7% of the people that don't have fingerprints, so poor them. Uh, but more importantly, you do not want, I, well, we don't, don't want to stay or, or do something to put an obstacle in the way of commerce. So if you think of the way you use an app, you're already looking at the phone and pressing the button. All you need to do, you do that, it looks back at you. There is uh, no interaction. You do not now do something else. Whereas if you use the, the fingerprint, there's another thing, and, and, and this is something that apparently is a big concern in terms of privacy. Your face is already in the public arena. Your face no longer belongs to you. Uh, you lost it. Now, do you want your fingerprints in the cloud somewhere? Yeah, but, but that's a, that's a, that's, I'm going to push back on that answer. It was a little rough, right? The, the answer of only two phones have it, um, no phones have your, or no software has your product in it today. Yeah. And so you have to assume that the fingerprint technology is going to extend quicker better. than your business development is going to extend. No? Um. Okay, here's the thing. And if the phone manufacturers are trying to solve this problem, you're trying to solve it as a third-party solution. How do you get ahead of the, the actual device manufacturers owning this solution? Uh, one, um, clearly this is something that we would love to have it as a client in, uh, in whatever phones are manufactured, and it's perfectly doable. Uh, we identified the real hurt at the service provider level. They're losing money left and right, where you're losing you know, maybe a couple of bucks here and there. And they really need to do something now. Uh, and this is as frictionless, as what, easy to work with. What clients do you have on board ready to beta test? Like I said, we're launching next quarter. Uh, Who have you been talked to that's shown the most interest? Uh, well, uh, mobile wallets, payments, uh, money, sending money overseas to, uh, to other people. Uh, an enterprise, a remote access to the enterprise that has been very, very open-minded about it. Uh, they have to uh, uh, handle all those little dongles and things. Those are expensive. They get lost the moment they get lost. It's a secure, huge security breach. So the management of that becomes a headache. This becomes a, an aspirin. That makes sense? Bringing, uh, bringing selfies to, to the next level. So thank you for that. Uh, just um, uh, to, uh, to piggyback on, uh, on David's comments about um, uh, competition. Um, so there are other um, uh, competitors like Kilemon or uh, some other companies that have been around for quite a while. So why hasn't it caught up yet? And what's the problem on the OEM side? And what's your roadmap on the OEM side? Right. Uh, okay. We built this from mobile.
from the ground up. We didn't take something for computers or for, for uh, door access kind of thing and compare it. We built it from the, from, from the ground up. In that sense, we were born in mobile, worked be better in mobile. Uh, that's one thing. The other thing is uh, this thing can actually uh, manage uh, in all sorts of circumstances that competitors really can't. And we got a really cool anti-spoofing thing. Uh, and that makes a world of difference. It, it, you can rely on this to work time after time. If we were to shut down all the lights and close everything, this would be completely dark. Uh, the light from the screen would be enough to illuminate my face and get a good reading. Are you guys going to win because of your technology or your business strategy? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. Is, is your major differentiator in the end going to be your technology solution? the anti-spoofing, the facial recognition, or is it going to be your ability to sell this into app developers and into the carriers? Technology is only going to get you so far. It's going to get me through the door. It's not going to make me a successful company. You know, clearly, what we need right now is to ramp up, get this in as many businesses, as many service providers, make it as easy for them to integrate into what they have, and maybe you know, in a quarter or two, you're going to open the app to your, I don't know, your favorite bank and see, oh, you might want to get face recognition as part of the thing, and you'll remember that it was us. Did, well, hopefully so. Did, did you connect with companies like uh, Dropcam or Doorbot or uh, Internet of Things uh, type of, uh, of companies? Dropcam or uh, Doorbot and being, being able to uh, use the face There's recognition? There's an awful to, lot of echo. I'm going to get next to you so I can actually hear what you're saying. I'm sorry about that. Did you try to, um, to work with Dropcam or uh, Doorbot in order to get, um, uh, you know, uh, open the door access type of thing? Oh, access to doors and, and remote access and, and yeah. so on. Well, can uh, you say the question again, just so everyone can hear it? <laughs> I couldn't quite. Can you say the question, just like in your... Okay, um, the question is, can this be used to uh, open a door? Yeah. Okay, so the same technology that showed you uh, the bank access, uh, second factor, we can stick that uh, <laughs> either, if it's a door of a building that's managed, that's easy to do, uh, within a car, it would be some sort of direct connection, uh, probably uh, NFC or Bluetooth or something like that. We haven't done it. Uh, it's certainly something, you're not the first one to ask it. It's certainly coming. Raise your hand if you would rather have your face as a security mechanism versus your thumb. Face? Thumb? Everybody else is just out. Not the cool. same. And there's about a third of the audience that hasn't made up its mind. There you go. <laughs> Greenfield. Right. So we're, we're unfortunately out of time. You guys did a great job. Is it you? Thank, Thank you. you guys very much. Thank you very much.